This has been our most requested series to bring back. We haven't done one of these since 2021. Welcome back to the Monthly Sales Recap. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the August of 2023 Monthly Sales Recap video. It's been a really long time since we've done one of these, um, but you guys really, really want to see these numbers. And the truth is there is no reason why we can't continue to show you these numbers. It just became tedious and stuff. So we stopped doing it. However, here we are back in uh, it's September now, but we're looking back at August and I really want to show you, you know, what's changed and stuff. Um, not that a ton has changed, but we also started to break down a little bit more kind of looking at a few expenses and stuff, none of the labor and anything, but we can kind of look at what we spent on shipping refunds, um, fees for like BrickLink, BrickOwl, eBay, and then of course the PayPal fees and stuff. And we can kind of see how much it really cost us uh, to sell the pieces that we actually sold on the platform. So first of all, we have this very standard chart. This is what we used to look at when it came to, uh, you know, all the monthly sales recap videos. So this is something we will look at each video, I think, um, this kind of basic chart. However, um, obviously starting in August and having not tracked uh, parts at the beginning of the month, lots at the beginning of the month, all that kind of stuff, we don't, for this month at least, see any growth or anything through the store. So uh, we will look back at this later, um, you know, when we go to look over September and everything, because we can kind of see a comparison and stuff. But as of now, we're, we're just going to look at kind of this new sheet right here where... Um, We'll go over some of the more specific numbers in a little more detail and stuff. I wanted to make it a little more visual. However, I'm not sure what other charts I can add and stuff um, that really give a visualization. So we have a few here that'll show up in a second, but I want to just start with this stuff. So um, again, we don't know what the parts at the beginning of the month for August were, um, only because we didn't track it on a daily basis. And it is too late now to kind of go back and look. Um, but parts at the end of the month, we ended with 646,083 pieces in our store. Um, I think we just hit about 650 um, last week or two weeks ago. Or I don't know. I'm recording this on the, what is this? This say is the 14th of September. So um, maybe a little over a week ago, we hit above 650. Um, so... You know, that's a really good number. That was something we had always talked about maybe not being able to reach. We weren't sure if we'd get that high. Um, I think uh, 7, maybe if we really stretch it, 750 is probably the max with the current allotted space that we have for it. But um, obviously that, that could change. But 650,000 is a lot bigger than we ever expected to be um, while still operating in the garage. So definitely not bad. Um, again, we didn't track the lots at the beginning of the month, so that's an unknown number. However, I do know it was higher than what we ended with. Um, it was up in the area of 20,000, maybe even above 20,000 at the beginning. Lots at the end of the month jumped down to 19,301. We've been really good at getting our quantity increased. Um, so, you know, for things like we just did the small plates category, we just did small slopes, we did small tiles. Um, even large plates. Um, we did small modified bricks. We've been doing a lot of categories recently that add a lot of quantity. However, the lot diversity there is not exactly what what we're kind of you know trying to reach for. So hopefully really soon we'll have another decorated that comes through. And then as you've been seeing, if you've been watching in the vlogs, we're working to get through a about a bin and a half uh, of minifig parts or our category we call minifig parts, um, which obviously are is kind of just a hodgepodge of everything so there's tons and tons and tons of lots in there which i expect that including decorated is kind of where we started to lose some of the lot count i think we have the majority of the basic pieces in the inventory that's what we're kind of building up the quantity of um, but we really need to get back to some of those minifig parts and all that kind of stuff that uh, we only have a few quantity of but the lot count really diversifies the inventory so since we didn't track the parts at the beginning of the month um, we don't know how many parts were added However, we did track how many parts were sold, or we could go backtrack. Uh, 80,228 pieces were actually sold. Now, this counts BrickLink and Brick Owl. We have been doing some eBay sales, not specific pieces or minifigs or anything. We haven't gotten to there, but we have sold some bulk, like dirty slash damaged Lego pieces on eBay. And we have also sold some, um, I think they're just bags of like 100 minifig heads or something like that. Um, and may, I think that was actually it for this month for, for eBay, but we also have like a little bag of like 
six ounces of Technic, random Technic parts listed, things like that. Um, but the eBay is really just, we're trying to get rid of bulk that is, that we count non-sellable. Um, some people buy it and, you know, you can clean it out and, and do whatever you'd like with it. Um, and a lot of it is sellable if you really just wash it off. We just don't take the time to do that. So we're trying to sell that and we're pretty much selling that at cost. Um, so we're not making any money from that. But I think it's better than throwing it away because it gives it potentially a second life. Whoever buys the box to then dig through it and throw away the stuff that is trash or that is like too damaged or whatever that they really don't want. But they might be able to reuse the stuff that they're willing to kind of clean off. Um, but yeah, 80,228 pieces in a month is pretty good. Um, not terrible. Uh, we've been tracking fans for whatever reason for the past couple years when we were doing these videos. So we have that here too. Fans, we don't know at the beginning again because we weren't tracking. Uh, end of the month, 874 fans. So I'm sure we gained a few fans there. Um, again, this is something I really never know about. Um, it's just it's a, one of those weird ones. I also feel like I should maybe have a camera facing me so I can interact with the camera instead of you just looking at the screen. That might be the next one. That might be a little bit better. Um, okay, so we're going to go down to the sales for the month. So this was, you know, traditionally summer is, uh, is a little bit slower. We see what, what most people call, I think, the summer slowdown. At least that's what we call it. Um, orders tend to slow over the course of June, July, and August, um, and maybe a little bit into September. For us, August has traditionally, over the past three years, you know, this being our fourth year, but the past three years has always been our worst month of maybe not the year, but at least of that summer slowdown period. Always. Um, however, this August was like by far, like like it was not anywhere in that area of August traditionally like 50% down, all that kind of stuff. We were actually up for August um, as, as our best month that we've ever had. Um, which is really, really good. So who knows why August was so strong for us. Um, you know, it could have been a mixture of a couple things. We were really, really good at adding over the course of July and even early August. Um, but nothing stood out as like any crazy $2,000 order or anything. It was actually good number of just total sales. Um, so our total sales for August, and again, this includes BrickLink, Brick Owl, and a little bit of eBay, or it includes all of eBay, but just a small portion. Total sales was $13,538.18. Then total orders, we did 366 total orders. Again, that's including eBay, Brick Owl, and BrickLink, which means we have an average sale price of $36.99. So about $37 per sale, not bad. It's a really good number for us. Um, part of the reason we're able to get this as high as it is right now is because we do offer free shipping if you spend $59 or more. Um, so if you spend that money, you get free shipping, which increases the size of our orders. Um, that means we get an average of just over 12 sales per day. Um, again, this always fluctuates. It's not a consistent 12, but some days you come in with 15 and other days you come in with like eight. Um, so this is the little visualizations that I have. Um, kind of tiny little pie charts. You can kind of see percentage wise of where everything is. Obviously, the large majority, like 94-ish percent or something like that, of our sales were on BrickLink. Um, so BrickLink is still definitely our primary place where we get the most sales, um, both in total order count and total sales dollar volume or dollar-wise. Um, BrickLink's obviously up top, number one there. Um, Brick Owl, just a little bit, and then eBay, really tiny amount. Um, okay, so... There's the visualization. Now, here's where we're going to jump into something that we haven't done before: platform fees, PayPal fees, shipping, etc. Um, so, if you could jump, or if you look over to the right there, the platform fees include eBay fees, Brick Owl fees, and Brick Link fees. Um, and actually, off the top of my head, maybe they don't include Brick or eBay. I don't know if I threw eBay in there. Um, but platform fees for this month were three hundred one dollars and fifty one cents. Um, for some reason, that feels a little bit low. No, no, that, that seems about right. So about $300 um, is what it costs us in terms of what we paid to BrickLink for the fee and what we paid to Brick Owl for the fee. Again, I don't think I put eBay in there. Um, PayPal fees, this is the one that always kills me. Uh, $608.99. Uh, really a lot. PayPal is really, they take a huge chunk of everything. Um, and the, the reason the fees are so skewed here, even though theoretically the percentages are pretty close, is that PayPal takes 3.5% plus 
a small, I think it's 35 cents or 30 cents per e- for each transaction, something like that. Don't quote me on that. But um, but that counts your shipping, you know, every single dollar in the order price. The platform fees, Brick Owl and BrickLink, only take the percentage of the brick sales, which is exactly why it's so much lower because we obviously charge $4.95 for shipping. If, let's say you have a $10 order uh, and six of it, or I don't know, let's just say six and six. Six dollars for shipping and six dollars worth of parts. The platform fee of BrickLink only charges you the percentage, the 3% on that six dollars of parts, not the six dollar shipping, whereas PayPal also charges it on the total twelve dollars. I don't know if that exactly made sense, but that's kind of why PayPal is always so high. Um, even though technically BrickLink and PayPal, their fees are close, just the way they charge the fees make it drastically different. Um, shipping charged is what we actually charged customers for shipping. So if they hit that free shipping mark, they obviously didn't get charged. If they did not hit the free shipping mark, they got charged a solid flat rate shipping of five ninety five dollars for buyers located in the U.S. International is a different thing, and that's why this number is all weird because international buyers pay whatever uh, the the dollar amount is to ship that which means that well okay i see what i did here uh shipping charged 1981.02 if we jump down to the next line there um this is a little out of order but we can see the total fees this is the platform fees and the paypal fees nine hundred twelve dollars and fifty cents and then what our shipping cost actually was this was one thousand nine hundred seventy seven dollars and sixty six cents so in this specific month we happen to be almost a one-on-one cost with our shipping versus, or with our shipping costs versus the shipping charged, like what we charge the customer. This jumps around. This is not always this close. This is within four dollars. That's crazy. Um, usually it is very close, but sometimes we do spend a little bit more on shipping in a month. Other months we spend a little bit less, and we actually make a tiny amount on the charge shipping. So it really just depends on the size of the order, how many people hit that free shipping mark, and all that kind of stuff. This month, we spent $126.55 on refunds. Um, So that's just if a customer comes back to us, says, hey, I got the wrong piece. This piece was damaged, whatever that might end up being. Um, And we always give, obviously, the refund of the part as well as an adjustment to make it so it's easy for them to go to another store and purchase another piece without the shipping cost being insane to them. Um, $126.55 feels about our average. It's about $100 a month, give or take. Um, And that probably ends up being maybe 15 to 20 customers um, in terms of how many people we're actually issuing a refund for. Most people get a refund of like four plus dollars. Um, We we really don't refund much less than that. Um, Yeah, pretty much for anything. Um, Sales tax. Obviously, we didn't make this money. Um, This is never, I mean, it, it came, well, technically... In the total sales number, that 13538 BrickLink, the way they calculate it is it looks like sales, but we never actually sold it in terms of the sales tax number. So this $723.99 uh, never technically hit our bank account. PayPal takes it out immediately and passes it right back to BrickLink so that BrickLink can actually pay it. Um, but I did put this on the chart, which then makes it look like when you add all those four numbers up down there, the total fees, shipping costs, refunds, and sales tax, total expenses are $2,890.16. Again, sales tax, not an, not really an expense exactly like a traditional expense, but it's part of that number because we didn't make that money. So essentially, when you look at it in terms of $13,538, that's the revenue that came into the store, it costs us just about $3,000 to get those uh, or, or to sell those pieces and stuff. Obviously, th- we did not profit $10,000 because we do have you know, insurance, utilities we pay all the people who work for us um you know there's a whole list of all the expenses that are actually come out of this but um, we also have to source the product and stuff of course and we're not going to get into all that i think that would be way too much to do on a monthly basis um but yeah essentially those these are the the main numbers here so uh i think that's pretty much it if you have any questions let us know hopefully this is what you guys were were looking for uh or at least forward to having back Um, so if it is, let us know. And if it's not, let us know what else you want to see specifically, um, that we can break down on a month to month basis a little more. And if you have any ideas for more visualizations, I really want to like beef this up with more charts and things that you can like visually see what is changing. However, right now uh, I could only think of two little pie charts. Um, so yeah, 
thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you found this interesting uh, and insightful to potentially, you know, what a store of our size can roughly do in a month. Again, August was a really good month for whatever reason. Um, September as of now, uh, the 14th, it's not looking phenomenal um, in terms of it's probably not going to be this high. However, we do expect October, November, December uh, later this year to continue to pick back up as it usually does um, in the, towards the end of the year. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching. We will see you all in the next video.